Well, aren't you handsome this morning? How you doing, Jax? About ready to hit the road? Oh, yeah. I'm gonna miss that view too, man. Doesn't get much better than that. Goodbye, Texas. Hey, everybody. On our way out of Texas, we've got something very fun, very unique here in Texarkana. That's right, the city of Texarkana. I'm sure we've all heard of it. I have never been through here in my life, although I've heard it said in songs and in movies. And uh, it turns out it's actually something quite unique because this federal building right here, this big courthouse slash post office, jail and everything, is shared by two different states. That's right, get it? Texas and Arkansas, Texarkana. That's right, so this is actually the uh, state line, and this is the only time in the entire United States that a government building is shared by two states inside. It runs right down the middle of the building. And I guess it had something to do with, you know, unity, trying to bring Texas and Arkansas together, but it sure doesn't happen very often. Even the sidewalk, welcome to Texarkana, and a little you are here with the star right there telling us where Texas connects to Arkansas right there. Most times when you cross state lines, it's just gonna be an invisible line. I kinda like that they have made it a, a quirky little, you know, like a physical line in the sidewalk and uh, the building inside is just like any other government building. They've got some uh, metal detectors in there and people are conducting business in there. So I'm not gonna go in there, but I just thought it would be interesting to see this spot right here. Oh, and I might add, there are no magnets in there at all. Boo. But welcome back to Arkansas, Eric and Jax. It's been a while. The uh, home of Walmart, where Walmart was founded. And, uh, well, have some fun today, all right? I am really happy with my arrival into Arkansas. This is the Arkansas Welcome Center on I-30 heading east. It's about eight miles once you get into Arkansas. I am parked in the RV section of the Welcome Center rest area. That's right, you can't see it, but on the entrance over there, it says absolutely no trucks. On both sides, it says absolutely no trucks. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 RV slots right here. And a massive welcome center over there. I went in as I always do. The reason I always go in and ask state to state, if you're a traveler, you know it can vary a lot state to state. Some states in this country, you can't even stay in your RV for any period of time, even though it's a rest area. The trucks can stay there for 12 hours, but the RV is not even allowed. Not, no overnight parking, limit stay to four hours, whatever. Now, Arkansas, and I had not spent a lot of time in Arkansas, that, that's my fault, but I think because they're so friendly with Texas, they told me at the counter that, yes, you can stay in this lot right here for up to 24 hours in your RV. And she warned me, she said, there, there's no electricity or, or power or, or sewer dump or anything like that out there. I said, no, no, it's all good. I, I boondock and she knew what the word boondocking meant. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. I do want to spend more time down here in Arkansas and Texas because compared to other states, man, they just love RVs and they take care of us. And they, and then they, and they appreciate us being there, spending some money in their, in their states, so. Arkansas is good in my book so far. They got free coffee in the lobby there, and actually it is really good coffee. But you wouldn't like it. I'm gonna replace my 2017 Arkansas road map with the new 2019 version. And I got a Trail of Tears map, also a state parks guide, an outdoor adventure guide through Corps of Engineer Campgrounds, and an entire book on Arkansas motorcycling. <laughs> yeah! But it's only 11 a.m. I have not even driven that far today, so I am not going to be staying at this particular Welcome Center rest area. I'm going to continue on the road and enjoy some more of what Arkansas has today before I settle. But I'm sure there'll be another rest area like this a little farther east, I think. And I don't know for sure if I'm going to stay on I-30 yet either. So we got lots of stuff to think about. But hey, there's sunshine, 
70 degrees, I'm a happy camper. Oh yeah. Yeah, getting off the highway. But actually this chicken express here, I'm gonna give it a shot. Uh, Jason and Candace said it was pretty good. And you guys know I love my chicken. So let's go see, see what kind of grub they got here. Or maybe it was Golden Chick that Jason was recommending, not Chicken Express. Well, either way, this place specializes in chicken tenders, so worth a shot. Haven't tried it yet, but it sure looks good. Got the breaded chicken tenders, mashed potatoes and gravy, gravy dipping sauce for your chicken, and fresh biscuit. I'm also in the land of sweet tea and unsweet tea and it's just not popular up north. So like to see it everywhere and to have it like everybody's ordering sweet tea. I'm like, Coke? They give me that weird look, you know? <laughs> but chicken dipped in gravy. You would not like it. It's delicious! Also, you know, I know it looks like I eat out a lot or I eat unhealthy a lot, but something to consider about my videos is, you know, right now I'm putting out a video once every three days. That means there's nine meals per video, and I only show you like one bad meal or one eating out per three days, basically. But, you know, because you only see one meal, your, your mind tricks you into saying, Eric always eats every meal like this. He's gonna die at an early age, blah, 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 you know? So, just so you know. I do like to try new stuff. I especially like to try stuff that's specific to regions. Not so much this chain type stuff, but local restaurants really is what I like to do. No tater hater here. Mashed potatoes are awesome. They're not KFC mashed potatoes, but they are delicious. And sometimes I get people asking me, how can I afford to eat out all the time? And again, one video equals two to three days of my life. But you know, I have mentioned it in the past that I, I, I make an income off of YouTube, off of ad revenue. So if you're seeing ads before or during my videos, that's my way of getting paid for this. Being able to buy sometimes food, yeah, but also to buy some of the admission tickets. Because a lot of the places I go and I film, it wouldn't be possible if I didn't pay that admission to go in and bring my camera and share it with you and so that you can enjoy it. So so really, it's kind of the circle of life with the whole YouTube ad revenue. You're either for it or against it, but you know, besides this and selling stickers and stuff, uh, this is my only income and I'm in it 100%, uh, you know? This is the only job I've had for the last six years. No, it'll be six years on December 6th. We're getting close, man. I'm surprised Jax has not snuck up and cried for chicken. And of course, you're thinking it. <laughs> Eric, how much money do you make a year or a month and all? <laughs> It's kind of awkward for me because most people wouldn't ask those kind of questions to the normal people. Like, I wouldn't even ask my own closest friends and family, how much do you make a year? How much do you make per month, exactly? <laughs> it's kind of weird that YouTube and, 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 and I, you and I have that relationship where it's perfectly normal for you to demand how much money I make. <laughs> I will let you know now, I make enough money so that my life is self-sustaining, you know, through the advertisements and selling stickers, I do make enough money to be able to pay my own bills and continue this lifestyle into the immediate future here. I put gas in the tank, pay all my bills on time, I pay my taxes, I do everything. However, it wasn't always that way. I mean, my loyal subscribers that have been with me for a long time, you know things were not always so easy for me on the road and... God, oh my gosh. Sorry. Wow. Doesn't seem like that long ago either. Sorry, sorry for getting emotional. I remember, we all remember. Wow, oh, time out. That was unexpected, sorry about that guys. I just want you to know I do remember the past. I know how you guys helped me get here and uh, we will never forget, um, you know, not only the work that I put into this, but the kindness of my viewers and subscribers that helped me get to where I am right now, right? Whew. Now, we are in hope. Arkansas, the birthplace of a famous U.S. president. Love him or hate him. <laughs> Hope, Arkansas is the birthplace of President William Clinton. Bill Clinton, the I did not have sexual relationships with that woman president, even though he did. 
Oh, we're gonna go try to find his uh, his home, his, his boyhood home, his childhood home, his birthplace type stuff. Yeah, there it is. I found the boyhood home of President Bill Clinton. Right here. No, somebody does actually live here. <laughs> I don't know if they like the attention. There's actually, I'm the only one here right now checking it out. The little plaque up front says Bill Clinton lived in this house with his mother and stepfather, Roger Clinton, from 1950 to 1953. It says Billy, as he was known then, loved to play with his electric train in the spare bedroom of this house. Oh, Billy. Billy. All right, well, don't say I don't take you places. <laughs> I like funny presidents. You gotta have a sense of humor to be in the office. Otherwise, you're not gonna, you're not gonna draw enough attention to yourself, right? You can't be plain and ordinary like uh, George Bush. <laughs> I'm not getting into politics or anything. I just, just sharing this with you. I think it's funny. I think he was a funny president. That's all I'm gonna say. Just a funny president. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're in Gurdon, Arkansas. And bear with me. I don't always have all the answers. I do have Google. But hoo hoo. International. International Order of the Hoo Hoo. Apparently their mascot is a black cat. The only thing I can think of is to knock and see if they're open. Nope. They are closed and no hours listed and we must be close to the train tracks. The old Union Pacific. Look at this old town though. There's more International Hoo Hoo. I don't get it. Please look at this building. There's an office for rent, guys. Yeah. It's a fixer-upper, you know. It's got that open floor plan. Yeah. No, I have not seen the Gurdon light. Is that a religious thing? Oh wait, there's something written here. No, it's not religious. There's a little sign here talking about the Gurdon light. If you want to pause it, you can, you can read that. But essentially, there was a death on the railroad tracks over here. And uh, the very next night, there was a strange Gurdon light seen on the tracks. Creepy. And so this nice lady uh, approached me and said she knows something about the garden light. So what, what can you tell me? Yes, the garden light has been at the garden light down the railroad tracks all my life. I've lived by it all my and, life. And, and you've seen it? Yes, I've seen it four times. And my brothers, they used to go down there when we were kids. Okay. And they would scare people up under the, the trussles and stuff. Yeah. And, but they... That was their life on Halloween, especially. Sure, That's sure. When it really gets crazy. Can you tell me about the hoo hoo? I don't. I don't the know hoo hoo. I don't really know it as okay. much about the hoo hoo. Okay, I'll Google it. But, yes. <laughs> hey, there thanks, you go. Thanks so much. It's everywhere, though. More hoo hoo. There's another banner across the street over there. I brought my phone. I'm gonna Google it. I got something here. The International Concentrated Order of the Hoo Hoo was founded here in 1892 by apparently fun-loving lumberjacks, lumbermen, stranded in town. The monument is topped by two of their so-called Hoo Hoo cats with upraised tails that form the number nine. A little okay. farther down here is the railroad tracks and the old railway station here where the nice lady told us that the creepy Gordon Light's at. And here's some more kitty cat monuments. I mean, this is a really old tablet here, erected in 1909. Look at the kitty cats on top. <laughs> yeah. And this one for the Fraternal Order of the Lumbermen. I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to see the ghost of a dead man on the tracks. So, I'm going to skip this one. Looking at uh, miles for the day. I don't want to say I have to be somewhere, but I do have plans for Thanksgiving. So there is a certain amount of miles I'm trying to put on each day to kind of make it feel normal as I travel. And uh, we're there. So I am officially looking for a spot to overnight park the RV, whether that's a parking lot, a rest area, or a campground. We shall find out. Perfect. Those of you who've been following me for a while know I generally do not overnight my RV at any rest area, highway rest area. But Texas and Arkansas, it is worth pointing out that it, it's definitely worth it and could be a really good idea. Uh, just down the road, I found another highway rest area in Arkansas with, I mean, welcome. Please, please, campers, overnight in this designated RV spot where trucks can't go. Yes. Oh, it's bright. I forgot my sunglasses. But I am parked right next to another sign that says, I'm in the right area. Trucks over there. Trucks way over there also because for me it's the continual you know trucks coming in and out the air brakes adjusting the generators the reefers all that happening i can't sleep some people can do it 
I've talked to people. Some people can't do Walmarts, but they can do rest areas. It just depends on what you like. They also have some little covered areas. In fact, let me get Jax. We'll come outside and get some fresh air. There you go, buddy. Is that our table? Is that our table? How do you know for sure? Oh, because you tested it out? Yeah. That's our table, huh? All right, good choice, Jax. It's a good boy. Because Jax man's pretty easy goings. Yeah, him's is. Yeah. Oh, he's feisty. Oh, he's feisty. He's feisty. A rest area for me is just fine because guess what? I am just going to sleep. Well, I got solar and TV. <laughs> I'm going to edit a little bit, but I just need a safe, secure spot for one night before hitting the road. And like I said, in my opinion, Arkansas and Texas really takes care of their campers that are traveling campers. Yeah. I may not even wear earplugs tonight. I might not. I'm far enough away from all the trucks. I don't think I need them. No, no. And I do want to spend some more time in Texas and Arkansas later, but right now I got plans. I got plans. What do you think, Jax man? You want to eat some grass? You want to eat some grass? Apparently. You're right, dad forgot to bring the treats out. That, that's a no-go, right? Didn't bring the treats. I'm heading back to the RV, dad. That new MacBook is so much faster than my last one. It's, it's hard to explain. It is lightning fast with rendering. I mean, I've got every clip color corrected and there's warp stabilization and it's 2.7K files downscaled to 1080p and it is lightning fast. It is really making it more fun to edit video. Seriously, I mean, it's not even dark and I'm done. I'm filming right now the, the, the close to it. So anyways, you guys take care. Jackson, I'll be back more from Arkansas in our next video when we see you. Thanks guys so much for watching. Appreciate all you. Bye-bye.